I like employment, eh? Smelling so nice, babes. Yeah. <laughs> it's a certain French thing that I can't say on air, otherwise Shoo. I'd be endorsing, you know? Wow, Chanel. wow, wow. Well, your late night talk show Zang is Zang. back. And of course, you're watching Training Essay on SABC3. And of course, you can catch us online with TrainingEssay.tv. Now, this month, of course, on Training Essay, we're celebrating young people doing amazing things, of course, to make this country a better place. And we like to celebrate you and the people that you like and, of course, the people that are celebrating the spirit of Mandela. So please share some names that you have of young people who are keeping Madiba's spirit alive on our social media platforms. Mm. I've already told you how you get there. And then, of course, you know what you need to do. But now, I want to check out some of your posts that you've sent out on Facebook to see what you have to say to ah! A cutie pie. This one here coming through from Karabukola. That says, <laughs> Ta on three, my lit squad is finally on. Yeah, It's African things. Feeling yeah. happy. Yes. And this one from Bule Luasokoba that says, the gang is back. You all look va va boom today. On point as always, let the craziness start. Gang, gang. Arriba, arriba. Hi, hi. I don't like DTT, you know why? Why? Because I work in a hospital. DTT is not a good sign. Oh. <laughs> not at all. So please, if you're going to say D, it must just be two. DTT. Paging not Dr. Dr. Musa. Paging oh my Dr. goodness, Musa. just chest compressions. Oh. Anyway. Now, remember, you can send us your posts. We like seeing and reading them right here, retweet and all that sort of thing. Like mm -hmm. I said, we are trending essay on Facebook and Instagram and so on and so forth. Tabila is ready with an update for us. Thank you very much, Musa. I like how he introduces me. And today, nice I finally you. get to do what I love which is giving you updates. Of course, I'm a news anchor. So in light of Mandela's birthday coming up tomorrow, the elders paid tribute to the life and legacy of Nelson Mandela by planting 100 trees at Johannesburg's Delta Park earlier okay. today. So the elders are independent. They're an independent group of global leaders working together for peace and human rights. Mm -hmm. So the concept of the elders is simple. Uh, they all have a small group of individuals who could use their collective wisdom, knowledge, and expertise to help in influence and tackle some issues that we all face as a global community. So the Elders was formally launched in July 2017 by Nelson Mandela. So some of the members of the Elders include Kofi Annan, who is the hmm. chair, Grasa Michelle, Ban Ki-moon, a South Korean diplomat who was the eighth Secretary General of the United Nations, just to mention a few. And it's on to the next hashtag. <laughs> People of every race and every walk of life, the world thanks you for sharing Nelson Mandela with us. His struggle was your struggle. His triumph was your triumph. I'm sure a lot of us remember that. It was mm. exactly five years ago when former U.S. President Barack Obama gave us his now famous and electrifying speech at Dr. Nelson Mandela's memorial service at the FNB Stadium. So today, yesterday, the wordsmith himself, Obama, returned to South Africa to deliver the 16th annual Mandela Lecture. And there has been much excitement and anticipation for the arrival of the former U.S. statesman as he was to lead the 100-year celebration of Madiba's birthday, the birthday of the global icon Madiba is marked by the annual lecture, which this year is a call, is calling for people to take action and inspire change. Let's now take a look at some highlights of that lecture. President Cyril Ramaphosa, <laughs> I can see Madiba smiling to hear me calling President Ramaphosa. <laughs> <laughs> The previous structures of privilege and power and injustice and exploitation never completely went away. They were never fully dislodged. <laughs> Caste differences still impact the life chances of people in the Indian subcontinent. Ethnic and religious differences still determine who gets opportunity from Central Europe to the Gulf. And I should add, by the way, right now I'm actually surprised by how much money I got. And let me tell you something. I don't have half as much as most of these folks, or a tenth or a hundredth. There's only so much you can eat. There's only so big a house you can have. 
There, there's only so many nice trips you can take. Oh, did you see our billionaire president clapping? So listen, <laughs> it has to be said officially that Barack Obama had the best lecture speech of our time. So his speech touched on various topics such as corruption, gender bias, privilege, economic inequality, Brilliant. and specifically the disparity between the wealthy and powerful to those who are left out on the fringes of society. He even spoke on the successes of social media, but also warned us against the bigotry and the nature to incite dangerous views. All in all, it was a powerful subtweet mm. speech directed at a number of greedy, wealthy, and powerful people. Wow. That wasn't the script. Good time, don't move. Don't go. You know, yes. I, I'm adding drama. Nah, nah, nah. Add okay. the drama, darling. Adding Spice. drama, darling. Add the drama. Nice now, one. You did something that you really enjoy right now, and I think I'm going to talk about something that I really enjoy as well. Another important hashtag that popped up on the feed today was hashtag HIV survey. Now, Dr. Aaron Motoledi and other dignitaries were at a press conference earlier on today, and they were briefing us on the Human Science Research Council, otherwise known as the HSRC's findings, on the fifth national survey over 33,000 people were interviewed for this one across the country. Mm -hmm. And let's take a look at some of the findings um, that came across at this briefing. This tweet uh, comes through, of course, from Tabi Leste Lampele. It says that uh, there's now 7.9 million people wow. living with HIV in South Africa. An increase of 1.6 million from 2012. Wow. Now, KZN is still the highest number with uh, of HIV positive people, followed by Bumalanga Free State, mm. Northwest Gauteng, Eastern Cape, Limpopo, Northern Cape, and lastly is the Western Cape. Now, another concerning thing about this is that uh, the Western Cape, even though they have the lowest number mm. of people that are HIV infected, they showed a prevalence that has increased over the past six years from when they did the study in 2012. You're doing so well. Yeah, so it's, 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 it's that simple thing that, you know, you've got less numbers, but the increase has happened. It's higher. Very, well, it's because people aren't really wrapping it up anymore. Condom usage is decreasing, which is alarming, because the number of people are having sex before the age of 15 sure. is increasing. So, guys, even though overall the rate of infection is down, the rate of infection of people be aged between 15 and 24 is said to be high. So you still have to wrap it up. And, you know... the what people don't realize is, you know, the nature of rape culture and, and the, the power balances and, you know, the abuse that we're suffering in this country at this stage of the game. What people don't realize is that uh, when you're having uh, unprotected sex, um, there's a term that it says it's called dry sex. So okay. if, the, if the woman is not yet lubricated mm -hmm. or prepared to be having intercourse, so the, her body prepares for the, for the moment, mm. uh, men sometimes force themselves onto, onto women when they, even though it might be consensual, you might physically not be ready. Yeah. Um, and that increases your rate of, or your chances of actually contracting uh, the That's virus. Um, maybe you want to give us a more medical... Yeah, so what happens is, so the private parts, especially the vagina, um, mm. has a different kind of skin on it, right? It's more like the inside of your mouth. So it's highly sensitive to the environment. So it needs to be moist. And when dirty things are happening, um, you need it's not it. Dirty, dirty it's a things. beautiful <laughs> thing between people. Yeah? Okay. When beautiful things between people are happening, you need that area to get a lot uh, not so dry, let's put it that way, or a lot more lubricated mm -hmm. so that when friction does start occurring, the tears don't happen because that's where you acquire infection when the tears are happening mm. and then bodily fluids are moving in and out. So Guys, it's quite the, interesting. The Landuza, the HIV survey also found that most women know their HIV status, meaning our booty needs to go and step up, step up their game and get themselves tested because Amanda Mazane and women know their statuses because what you, you said, why? And I asked you, why so, do they know? So this is, I don't know if you guys have heard of this, mm. where guys say they test themselves using their girlfriend. So they physically wow, don't go to the clinic to go test. They're saying, baby, did you test? And baby says, yes, the what result, if, negative. And so they think they've tested. Like, what if baby's promiscuous? That's the whole point about this, that you never know what the other person is. So don't trust anyone. Be responsible just, for your own life. Yeah. It's really just that. Yeah. So, of course, uh, there is some good. And, of course, there is wow. some bad news, too. This hashtag HIV survey. And the bad news is that South Africa is still one of the countries that has the highest HIV epidemics in the world. Mm -hmm. But the good news is that the number of people that are on treatment, uh, as well as the awareness for HIV, is higher. Also, uh, we're out of those deep, dark days when HIV Ooh. was this doom and gloom, an immediate life sentence and all that sort of thing. But there was, of course, a ad that came out not so long ago mm. in the 80s. And this just suggested, it was from Australia, that, you know, HIV is a bad thing. Take a look at this very it old ad. at some stage. At first, 
first, only gays and IV drug users were being killed by AIDS. But now we know every one of us could be devastated by it. That was very scary. So even here at home, we had some pretty dramatic public service announcements to teach people about HIV and AIDS. Do you guys remember this one? Who are you? Why do you insist on believing everything they say? Is that you? <laughs> what makes you think you're so cool? Listen, there's been some good stuff. But I need to know. Who are you? I don't know. Don't worry. We'll work this out together. I think I remember that one. So that was a campaign aimed at young people to question themselves and their behavior in the fight against HIV. Quite aggressively. Very aggressive. Mm. Yeah. Now, something else that has played quite a role in listening the stigma around HIV as well as, you know, public figures. That's mm. been a big one. You yes. know what I'm saying? Public figures coming out and talking about, you know, family members or they themselves having this. And in 2005, President Nelson Mandela shared with the world that his son, Mahatu Mandela, had died or passed away from the AIDS-related illness. Now, thanks to people like Utata, mm. we no longer have to, you know, be scared or, you know, be overly dramatic in terms of the ads and that sort of thing that we put out in terms of messaging. But there is, of course, a more positive outlook on this, like in this video. Now that you know the HIV status, it does look shinchella, man. Just change everything. I'm here. Hey, Today I tested positive for HIV, and you know what? I can manage it. Hmm. Now I must say that's a whole lot better than yeah. that Grim Reaper one that we mm. saw a little bit earlier on. And of course you can live a long healthy life being HIV positive with the many options of help that come in and decrease the infection, uh, such as PrEP, mm -hmm. yeah. there's PEP, there's... Uh, oh, so, say for example you've been in a situation where uh, you've been exposed, maybe you were in a situation where, you know, there was an assault, a sexual assault against you. Mm. Um, you can go on a course of medication uh, for like a month of yeah. ARVs that um, can help you sort of not be infected, you yeah. know. Yeah. So there are solutions. Yes, many, many options available to you. So Condomized please, guys. if you do go out there and yeah, you are sexually active, top, please yeah. make sure that you do use a condom. And of course, there are many alternatives like Nina has mentioned in terms of PrEP for those that are high risk yeah. individuals. Mm. That is medication that you take before and that will prevent you acquiring the disease. And of course, like we've explained, PEP, which is medication that you take after. It's not only for like sexual assaults and things like that. Mm. If you've slept with someone and a condom burst or you're like, oh, I don't really know that person's history, you can go to any facility and say, listen, I'd like that medication. Yeah. You'll be get tested and you'll get the medication medication right there and then to prevent you acquiring the infection and then of course if you are positive just take the medication it's really just that of course discuss it talk about it with your family friends and all that sort of thing so that people can help you on that journey from us here for now we're going to an ad break we'll see you after this